What you've actually got is you've got two neurological systems sat together, connecting up, assuming particular roles, and you've got the hypnotist inviting the hypnotist to move their mind in some interesting ways that are likely to produce interesting effects. Hey there, how's it going? This is James Tripp with a video for James Tripp Chaos Wave. I'm gonna be talking here about the term hypnotic facilitation and hypnotic facilitation skills, which is one that I think that I'm pretty unique in using. I wanna give you the reasons why I use that term rather than simply talking about doing hypnosis. Now, I'm gonna be super quick with this video because I am on with Chris Thompson, Mike Mandel's partner. He's gonna be interviewing me in eight minutes from now. My mission, should I choose to accept it, is to get this message to you in less than eight minutes. So, hypnotic facilitation. The reason I'm talking about this is because I've just been making the intro video for the orientation section of the new Hypnosis Without Trance online deep apprenticeship. I was talking in that intro video about developing exquisite hypnotic facilitation skills. And it occurred to me, you know, that I'm, I'm kind of unique in using this term. The reason I use this term is because I believe it is a more accurate representation of what is happening during formal hypnosis. So when I say formal hypnosis, what I mean is a situation where we see somebody called a hypnotist, somebody in the role of hypnotist, working with at least one other person to shift their experience, shift their behaviors, this kind of thing. So it might be uh, hypnotherapy, it might be street hypnosis, it might be stage hypnosis, or maybe there are some other contexts you could think of. So when you look at a situation like that, what you see is you see these two people, the, the hypnotist or the hypnotic operator in one role and the hypnotee or hypnotees in another role. And we see some communication happening, often more on the side of the hypnotist, and we see a change in state or behavior occurring in the hypnotee. And it can really look like when we watch this that the hypnotist did something to that person to make something happen. It can look like a linear control dynamic, just like on a coffee machine, when you put the coin in and you put the right thing, the right number in, you'll get the coffee that you want, right? It's linear. But what's actually happening is not that. What's actually happening is something a lot richer than that, something a lot more complex than that. What you've actually got is you've got two people sat together, two neurological systems sat together, connecting up, assuming particular roles, and you've got the hypnotist inviting the hypnotist to move their mind in some interesting ways that are likely to produce interesting effects. Now, when you look at it like that, you can see there's no cause and effect chain. There is an active participation upon the part of the hypnotee, and it is the hypnotee who is going to need to move their mind in particular ways. Somebody can listen to your words. If you're a hypnotic facilitator, they can listen to your words and they can ignore them. They can listen to your suggestions and they can do something else. Okay, whether you call that volition, whether you call that free will, whether you call it distraction, whether you call it whatever, it's like they have a hypnotist in their own head that they could be listening to instead of you. So. When we're doing hypnosis, we're never really controlling people. We're dealing with a complex dynamic. That person that you're sat with when you're a hypnotist, they're a self-organizing complex system. The craft is in figuring how to nudge that system and pay attention to feedback, to notice what happens when you nudge it this way, when you nudge it that way. Does what you predicted happen or does something else happen? Do you know when you get feedback how to uh, kind of mitigate the things you don't want to happen and amplify the things that you do want to happen? Because this is the true craft of hypnotic facilitation. And the more you understand it's a facilitation, there's a dance there, it has nuance to it. It requires attention to detail in order to course correct towards the outcome that you want. The more you understand this, the more effective you become. 
So this is why it's actually more useful to consider yourself a hypnotic facilitator than a hypnotist who's got some kind of magic sequence of words that's gonna do a thing. It enables you to tap into your own adaptiveness, your own ability to problem solve on the fly, your own ability to create solutions in the moment for unique issues or problems that may come up. So this is why I use the term hypnotic facilitator instead of hypnotist. So if you like this video, if this video has been useful to you in shifting your thinking, give it a thumbs up. If you want more on using your mind to shape your life, which might be in the realm of hypnosis, might be NLP, might be pragmatic psychology, mind tech, life tech, you wanna to subscribe to this channel for rare knowledge you will not get anywhere else and you wanna hit the notifications bell. In the meantime, if you have any questions about this, please do use the comment section below and that way the Chaos Wave conversation can continue.